especially since we got Don uh, Kennedy in the house. <laughs> 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 Good to see you, young man. I, I, I don't even remember the name, but it's good to see you, man. I'm glad you came back out, man. I was thinking I scared you away for a minute. But welcome back. It's so good to be here today. Amen. You know, it really is. What's up, Frank? Good to see you. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just, I'm just excited. Amen. Probably for no reason at all. The fact that I'm alive. Yeah. Amen. God, this morning, I can see daylight. Amen. It's like nothing else matters, man. I'm like, man, I have an opportunity to defeat the enemy. Amen. To prove and to show that my God is alive and well. Yes. No, my God is not dead. Yes, he is. Amen. I don't know about your God. Yes, my, my God has got arms and feet. He's alive. <laughs> He's not a statue. Amen. He's not an image, but he's real. Yes. And he lives inside. Yes, amen. And that's the confidence that I, I walk around in. I had a conversation with one of my spiritual sons yesterday, and I said, you know, because I'm a competitive person, I always think in my mind that my influence is greater than your influence. Mm. That's just how I look at life. I don't care what kind of environment I, I'm in, my influence is greater than yours. I'm never outnumbered. I don't care how many sinners I'm in the room with. They're more that's worth me than it's against me. Amen. Amen. I've never feared the boss from hell because I believe I have more influence than the boss from hell. So that means every situation and every circumstance that I will ever be in, my influence will prevail. I don't think y'all feel it this morning. God has given us influence. It's called faith. Yes. It moves mountains. Yes. So you have on the inside of you tremendous influence that you can cause something physical to move from one place to another place. Yes. Oh, no, that ain't here. That ain't here spirit either. Man, I'm talking about influence. You, you know, we, we tend to see influence and we look at it negatively because we feel like we want to tell you know. But you have enough influence to, to be steadfast in the midst of the storm. Your influence will get you through the storm. And you know, amen for that. You know what I'll tell you all? This is what you all Turn the second down the chapter. I came here so you want to hear me preach. I was just trying to encourage you. I did. Trying to breathe life into you. You know, every morning I wake up, man, I say, man, I have an opportunity to kick hell right into you. Amen. 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 That's how I live my life. And if you've ever been delivered from anything, you'll have the same perspective. Amen. Maybe that's what it is. You know, number one, who the devil. Well, today is your opportunity to win over the devil. Amen. And get the victory. Hallelujah. Today you're free from drugs and alcohol. <laughs> in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. While you sit right where you are, you're Amen. no longer submitted to the spirit of suicide. Uh -huh. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. I speak the word of God right now and I break the spirit of depression off. Amen. 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 You're no longer depressed. Amen. Yeah, the trick is you're still thinking about that situation. That situation got nothing to do with the spirit that was just brought out in your life. Amen. Amen. The devil no longer has a right to make you feel depressed. That's right. Amen. He has no authority over your life. You have a right. Right now, because of the liberty of God's Spirit to feel any kind of way you want to feel. While you're sitting where you are right now, you can feel wealthy if you wanted to. Jesus. Amen. All my needs are met. Amen. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. And everything I've touched turns to profit. Yes. yes. Amen. That's the position of man. 
Okay, watch this. I had this conversation with one of my spiritual sons over in Africa, pastor in the church. And he was concerned in his spirit because there's a crisis in this country where they can't or they don't have access to gas. And because they don't have access to gas, the cost of gas has gone up to $20 a gallon. I said $20 a gallon. Wow. You go to the gas station over here, it's $2.19, depending on where you are. You don't have to pay $20 to get a gallon of gas. And I said, well, son, what would it take for you to get to church tomorrow? How much money do you need? He said, well, Dad, I, he said, I got two kids in and he said, look, for me, you know, when I, for me to get to where I got to go, I need 75 cents. It still breaks my heart. He said he only needs 75 cents to pay for transportation to get to church. So after that thing shook my heart, I just bust out laughing on the phone. And he was silent. He was trying to figure out why I was not laughing and what was so funny. I said, man, I'm looking at a job change over in the corner of my bedroom that has 75 cents at least 100 times. Now. I said, I got 75 cents in my ashtray in my car. Amen. Amen. And 
See, this is where I'm going. I honor my relationship with him. And that's one thing that's wrong with the Christian community today. We, we've gotten away from honor. We, we have no clue to what honor really is. We don't understand that heaven is all about honor. There's a scripture that we're all familiar with, and this is what it says. It says that you should honor your mother and your father. And it comes with a promise that your days may be long on the earth. And I don't know about you all, when I first read that scripture, I decided that I'm going to live long. I want to maximize my appointed time on the earth. We just had two preachers walk in the house. I felt the, I felt the atmosphere just elevated a little bit. How y'all doing today? Let me, let me get back into the phone. Y'all hang around? We can't drop off two kids. One with you, one with her. I like that because that really does honor. Amen. Amen. That's what that is. That's, that's honor. And, and that's what I want to touch on today. This is a very, very big weekend um, for me. And so don't y'all forget about that story. That's important. My spiritual son, well, I have two over there. There's two churches over there that are under me. And I receive the responsibility of caring for and I'm trusting that the people that are truly connected to my life over here that will take up the same banner that I take up. Amen. Amen. And would have my heart. Amen. And have my DNA. Have the same compassion that I have uh, for people. And for them to, to walk in the prosperity that God has already established for. And it's not all about money. It's about peace and joy. It's about having people in your orbit that pray for you. Amen. Care about you. I mean, you can't put a price on it. One thing I know is that him and his wife, my spiritual son, this week told me, he said they go to bed early because they get up at 2 o'clock every morning and they pray from 2 o'clock in the morning to 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. every day. And I said, well, why do you do that? He said, we're praying for you, Dad. We're praying for the family in America. We do it every day. And he said, sometimes we go beyond the system. And see, what y'all don't know is that there's people in Africa right now that's praying for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And they're in a the worse situation than you are in, but they're praying for you. Jesus. They're, they're being... Obedient to the Spirit of the Lord, and they're getting up and they're praying for every member of this foundation. It's a nine hour flight. That's how far away they are. If you look at the map, we're on one side of the Atlantic, they're all the way on the other side of the Atlantic, and just think God will move upon a family of believers to pray for you. And all they need is 75 cents. But they're praying for you. If that don't move you, you need to come to the altar at the end of the service and you need to let me pray for you. Amen. And get that spirit of deception off of you. So now when you leave out of here today, you leave out of here knowing that there are people in Africa that's laboring and praying for you every single day. They're praying for you. You don't have a right to quit. You don't have a right to give up. When people are praying for me like that. That's fine. Y'all with me? Yes. Y'all in second job? Yes. Second job, chapter one.
Those of you who are not offended.
Frankie, I am now the man today that my, my wife married 35 years ago. She's extremely happy and exuberant about that. Uh, I'm giving, I'm doing some marriage counseling. Yes. I, that's what I'm doing. And I can say this about my wife. In the 35 years we've been together, and if I can tack on a couple of years of pain and suffering that I put upon her. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't understand is that I was a piece of work. I can't see that. <laughs> All right, Shane. <Shantay. laughs> <laughs> don't y'all talk to Joy Jan. I know it was a close person, but I was a piece of work. I was raw material. That's what I was. There was no indication that I had the quality to be a dad or father or husband. There was no indication whatsoever. Most people you can look at and have hope. <laughs> Most people you can look at and you can see the possibility that something might possibly come out of it. You could look at me and you would see no indication of anything. In the 35 years we've been together, the only thing my wife has done was honor me. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. She's never disrespected me. She's never called me out of my name. She's never hollered at me. She never lived in the moment she just trusted God. Second John chapter one verse eight. It says, "Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we work for." It says, "Look to yourselves." It says, "Look to yourselves." It says, "Look to yourselves." It says, look at yourself. It says, examine yourself. Look at your own heart. You know, any country, if they were being attacked by another country, they wouldn't just engage them, they would make sure that the borders and the fortresses were intact first. And then they would engage the enemy. In other words, examine your heart before you jump on someone else. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's so easy to look at someone and point out their evil secrecies, but you don't want to look at yourself first. Oh, this is good preaching. Amen. This fits every area of your life. It says, look at yourself. Why? That we do not lose those things we were for. There are believers in our community that's losing things right now because they're not looking at themselves. Preach. Yeah, I'm preaching now. Yes, you are. But that we may receive a full reward. Pastor Sheila has not received her full reward yet, but so far she's gotten 35 years. Amen. 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 I've gotten 35 years. Why? Because I'm not looking at her, I'm looking at my heart. Yes. Amen. There's something that I'm believing God for. Amen. Even when it comes to this 
results of Pastor Schiller and I working hard. Working so that we won't lose the reward that God has already established for us. Amen. Well, was Amen. Amen. I said most people don't want to work. You don't really want to work because when you start looking inward and start looking at yourself, it puts a demand on your capacity to change. You try to work on the other person when you should be working on yourself. Amen. 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 Somebody should do some money on him instead. I ain't saying that. Okay. But hear what I'm saying. Or hear what the scripture is saying. Hear what I'm saying. Read the scripture along with me. It says this to yourself. It says, look at yourself. That we do not lose those things we work for. What are you working for? That's why I told you. We have a dream. And we were working towards that dream. But we started out not looking at ourselves. And it began to cloud up what the purpose of God was. Which was to obtain the reward that he has for us. So we
For the first time in 35 years, I wasn't even here to celebrate my anniversary in my life. Because I was out of town. And 
Not because you think I'm weird. Yeah. There's a, a different anointing that's on my life than that's even on your parents' lives. There's a grace that God has put on my life that allows me, watch this now, to roll up my sleeves and get down in the trench with you. That takes grace because that's not my trench. That's your trench. So that means that God placed someone in my life that would understand that and not fight against it.
I want everything God has for me. I, I, want, I want everything that God has for me. So that means that if, if I got to cultivate myself though, be so that I can maximize our relationship, then why not do it? Because every day there's a, a reward that's attached to it. So, so if God wants to cultivate me and move some things out of my life so I can be the best pastor for you, there's a reward that's attached to it. So why not you? I had surgery about four or five years ago. And every now and then people remind me of They say, why do you walk like that, Pastor? It's a very impactful moment in my life when I had to get my head wrapped around somebody opening up the back of my neck and cut the fat of my vertebrae so that I could walk for the rest of my life. It was a very traumatic surgery. It was so traumatic that they couldn't even immediately move me from the preparation room to surgery because they couldn't get my blood pressure to go down. I was terrified. The devil will hit you with thoughts. Are you going to come? So they pushed me in, into this room, and because they couldn't get my blood pressure to go down, they cut all the lights off, stopped all of the movement around me, just to get me to relax. But it didn't work. <laughs> they don't know that for a project kid that has an adverse reaction. Like, what do people want? Why is it quiet here? I don't hear the ambulance. I don't hear nobody cussing. It's too quiet here. So finally, the surgeon came back. All right, let's just take them all back. And he got so much pushback. I mean, they fought against him tooth and nail not to have surgery on me. And I believe that was the Spirit of God saying, I got him. Amen. 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 That was some of So he overruled all of them. They pushed me back into surgery, cut my neck open, and my dog on blood pressure went boom, just exploded even more. And they had to rush and put things in place so they wouldn't lose me. See, I don't know about that. The more I've had to deal with her. That's why God gave me her. Because what she did was she prayed. Amen. Amen. See, that's my reward. Amen. My reward was praying for me. Amen. They closed me back up and my blood pressure went down. And the part that really blessed me the most, and this is why I honor my wife and I want to honor her today, is that I could do absolutely nothing, man, for myself. Nothing. I couldn't do nothing for myself. She literally, get this, Tish, she literally had to pick me up out of the bed. Walk me across the room to the bed, to the bathroom, and sit me on top. Got married right now. Because she could have been, boom, over on the floor out there.
And I'm, I'm just, I'm just playing. <laughs> but what if I would change something about it? A man who finds a wife finds a good thing and they find favor with God. Favor will work for me on an operating table. And my wife cared for me. I couldn't do nothing for myself. I was so doped up I couldn't even make decisions. Now, in fact, somebody got away with a thousand dollars. You know that? Yeah. I was like somebody needed some help. And I said, so I'll give it to them. And then I remember, I'm like, who am I? Yeah. Yeah. That's how awesome God is. 
If he sends someone into your life, they, they're not supposed to disrupt your life. If they do, you need to take a step back. Amen. I said if they do, you need to take a step back. And you need to do some examination because God will never do that to you. The word useful. I'm going to stop right now. I want to talk about that word useful because the Apostle Paul used it several times when he was talking to Timothy. He used it several times. He even said that John Mark was useful to him. The scripture says that when we become honorable, we're useful to God. I believe that's a basic human need. You want to be useful. Well, why else, why else would you want to be here if you have no use? Amen. Think about it. If you are uh, of no use and there's no purpose, then, then your life is not fulfilling. You're void. My wife is useful to me. That's why, church, everybody that God sends into my life 
Because I don't know if you wood or hay or gold or silver. I don't know. But I know if you sit under the word, the word will refine you. And it will reveal then what you are made of. Yes. It is not that I'm choosing. It, you know, I didn't choose anybody in here to be a part of my life. I'm like, God. Some little demon dude, man, all he do is rock bass. <laughs> a weed head, crack head. I mean, I don't know what I would have chose. <laughs> so, you know what? God took that responsibility out of my hands. And He said, I'm going to send Shil Sylvia Stubblefield into your life. I choose her for you. I'm like, well, God, she ain't flexible. <laughs> I'm like, I need somebody from the hood. <laughs> I begin to realize she's aggressive too. I'm like, how is that possible when you're not from the hood? But I'm just making light of it, but God chose her for me. God chose everybody in here. For me, and he chose me for you. Amen. 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 See, Tish, you're right. Would y'all understand that it wasn't an accident that you guys chose me to officiate your wedding years ago? Amen. And, then, and Ray McQueen was in the equation because you were friends with him. And because of that relationship, that's how we manage it.
Then they checked on us to make sure that we got back here okay. Amen. And they were doing that for you. Yes, 
took the wrong car. <laughs> So I found out where she was, and I went and switched cars. <coughs> That's what you do for people that you honor. You go out of your way, and you reach into your substance, and you become a blessing to them. That's honor. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, amen. That's honor. If you truly appreciate someone, you bless them with your substance because you realize that they're speaking and sowing into your life. What if God never placed me in your life? This church wouldn't exist. If I would have never taken up the call of God and my wife would have never agreed, Charles, to walk with me in ministry, this church wouldn't exist. You wouldn't be here. You'd be a member of another church. And of course, I'm just taking that for granted, but you'd be a member of another church. <laughs> we wouldn't have the relationship that we have now. So you should always honor me. Even when I'm correcting you in the word, you should always honor me who Pastor Shiller and I are in your life. Yeah. Even if, watch this now, even if you spot an inconsistency in my life, you should still honor me. Yeah. Amen. I see yours. <laughs> and you see mine. <laughs> and I honor everybody in here. Yeah. I do. I've never neglected my obligation in honoring everybody that you call me. I try my best to respond. Yeah. That's why I text you that. <laughs> because in my heart, you're still connected unless you tell me you're home. That's because I uphold my responsibility. So you should honor me and you should honor the person that God has in my life. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. 